I've often wondered what it was like for this man that Jesus healed in the gospel reading today. He was deaf and mute, which means he had never heard anything and was never able to express himself in speech. If anything came out of his mouth, it would just be groans. And now, finally, Jesus heals him, and he's hearing things for the first time. I wonder what that was like for him. Things that you and I take for granted. Every brand new thing he heard was something fresh. He was hearing for just the very first time. The first words, hearing other people speak, what that must have sounded like. Even little things such as walking on the street and hearing the sound of your foot on the pavement. Or uh, so many of the rustling, perhaps, of wind in the trees. Or what he felt the first time he heard a dog bark or a bird tweet. Or music, listening to music for the first time. Every day must have been like something amazing, something miraculous for that man. And Jesus also restored his speech to him so that it was not a matter of that the man, now that he could hear, people could teach him to speak like a young child has to learn, but Jesus gave him the full gift of speech and now everything in his heart he could express freely. How different it was for that man. And I also like to think since Jesus took him by himself to the side to work this miracle, that once the man's ears were opened, the first voice he ever heard was the voice of Jesus. Oh, what a blessing that must have been for him to hear his voice. You know, they often say that some types of birds, once they hatch from their eggs, the first animal they hear, they will see as their parent and follow that person or that individual. Well, I wonder if the man did that with Jesus. This was the man who gave him his hearing, and now he would listen to everything Jesus said and follow him completely. If he did, indeed, how blessed he was to be able to do that. Of course, in time, he heard other things that he discovered were probably not so beautiful to listen to, such as people uh, angry with each other, yelling, hateful talk, abusive language, all those other things that he heard. Just like you and I, we hear things every day, and some of them maybe still make us smile. We hear you know, certain birds chirping or anything. I'm a very amateur birdist, but as I sit and listen to the birds and the trees around, I try to re- uh, identify each bird just by its call or its warble. And I get a smile on my face even just when I hear those. And so many other things that are joyful voices for us. But of course, we hear other things. We hear the nasty words and the, the violence and the hate speech and so much else that is out in the world, and that dismays us. Alarms, sirens, things like that, and when they start blaring, you know, it, it you know, makes us very upset. Or sometimes a car drives by blasting something that the person driving the car calls music at levels that are decibels higher than anything any human ear should ever have to listen to. And we sit there and want to scream, you call that music? You should have the music from my generation. Now that was music, which of course every generation did to its preceding generations. But so many other things we hear. And while many of them we can identify right away and say, yeah, you know, that noise, that is just noise, There are other voices and other things we hear that are harmful, but we don't identify it right away. Yeah, we hear the voice of Jesus, certainly when we come to Mass, and hopefully at other times in our life, in our prayer, and other things we do. We know the Lord's call to us, and we listen to him. But unfortunately, there's lots of other voices out there, and they compete for our attention. Many people saying things that completely contradict what Jesus teaches. And this year, with a presidential election, we're certainly going to hear an awful lot more of that, not just from candidates who disagree with each other and will say completely opposite things, but so many other things that we know we're going to have to sift through and try to figure out who's saying the truth and who is not. And sometimes we inadvertently listen to the wrong people. And the results of that, many of you have seen. A lot of times when I'm speaking with uh, grown parents whose children are now grown, and they say to me, Father, I raised my children so carefully in the faith. I brought them to church every Sunday. I taught them everything that, I, that they needed to know to follow Jesus. I taught them that he was the most important thing. And now they've just abandoned it. They haven't even had my grandchildren baptized. 
And they wonder, you know, Father, they ask, what did I do wrong? And the answer to that is probably nothing. Especially when you have a family where one child is faithful and one isn't. Well, you didn't raise one child differently from the other. You didn't succeed with one and fail the other. Children have their own minds. We all have free will. And unlike a plant or a flower, you plant a seed and if you water it properly and give it the proper amount of sunlight and nutrients and everything, it will grow into the flower or the vegetable that we want it to be and will reap its fruits. But children are not like that. Sometimes we do everything we can to teach them the truth and they go out and tend to reject it. And that's because, yes, they're hearing Jesus from us, but there are so many other voices that they hear through their friends growing up, on TV, in newspapers, social media, you name it, everywhere. They hear so many other things that teach them different messages. And sometimes the message they hear from others seems more attractive and they don't see the need for Jesus but they see the need for these other things and they end up following them. So what can we do then? Well, certainly always pray for them, tell them why we think they're making a mistake, but just tell them and then leave it and hopefully they will come around and live their life. Nagging, of course, never gets the other person you know, to do what we want. So if every time we see them, you know, we start saying, so when are you finally gonna have my grandkids baptized? Well, even if they want to, they won't do it just because they, you know, just to be spiteful. So tell them, but then let it go. And pray that they will listen to the right voices and the ones that lead them to Christ and not the ones that lead them astray. But then there's other voices that you and I hear. I mean, we're here today because we love the Lord. No one has forced us to be here. And we're trying to follow him. And yet sometimes we know there are other things that we hear that we end up following. And I'm not talking about you know, social issues or hot topics, moral things, anything like that. Sometimes it's just the little things, those little voices in our hearts that we hear that tempt us to see things differently from how Jesus calls us to see them. And sometimes it's imperceivable and we don't even realize we're doing it. And maybe sometimes we even think we're justified in doing it. Littlest of things such as Imagine you hear somebody got a promotion at work and you say, well, that's nice. I wish I'd get a promotion or somebody got the promotion you wanted and say, how come he got it and I didn't? Or somebody forgets to send you a birthday card and you get very annoyed saying, you know, what did I do to this person that he or she doesn't love me enough to send me a birthday card? I always remember their birthday or... Anytime we're told to be sensitive to the needs and feelings of somebody else, and we might want to say, you know, when is somebody finally going to start being attentive to my needs and care about my feelings? You know, I have feelings and needs too. Who's going to listen to me? Those little voices in us that tell us to worry about ourselves and not about others. And that is the work of the devil. The devil is trying to bring us away from Christ, who tells us, put your life at service to one another, and as the prayer of St. Francis says, you know, that I so much, may seek not so much to be consoled as to console. But the devil loves to pull us away just by getting us to look at himself, at ourselves, rather. And notice, Satan never says to us, come and worship me. He doesn't do that because he knows we won't do that. We would never willingly worship the devil. Instead, he teaches a very different thing. He says, rather than worrying about others, worry about yourself. Put yourself first. Worry about, take care of you, because you know, and nobody else is going to, so you've got to be your own best friend. So take care of your own needs, and don't worry so much about the needs of others. And if we do that, that's when the devil has us. That's when he's won us over, and he can just reel us in. And one of our great uh, contemporary spiritual writers, uh, C.S. Lewis, if you're not familiar with his writings and looking for good spiritual reading, I highly recommend C.S. Lewis. And one of my favorite books of his was The Screwtape Letters. And The Screwtape Letters is a series of fictitious, of course, letters written by a senior uh, devil by the name of Screwtape to a young novice demon or imp by the name of Wormwood. And Wormwood has been given... A, a human being to be the one he's got to try to win away from God and win over to Satan. And he's not doing too well. The young man is starting to show more and more interest in God and getting closer and closer to him. And so he's worried. And Screwtape asks him in one of the letters, what are you going to do about it? And he says, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to get him to commit a murder because that will really bring him away from the enemy, as God is called in the whole book. You know, and then we'll have him. 
And Screwtape says to him, no, don't do that. If you make him commit a murder, he might realize what he's done violates God's law. And it might actually turn him into having contrition for what he did, and he might be repentant, and the result may be that you push him further into the enemy, God's embrace. He says, no, this is what you do. Get him to think about himself. Get him to turn his thoughts first and foremost into what he feels he needs. Because if you can turn his attention in on himself, that's when you will win him. And how true it is. We all know that. And we all face those little voices each and every day in our lives. And sometimes maybe we sit back and look and say, you know, how did I do that? How did I let myself get this way? Well, maybe what happened is that we stopped listening to Jesus and listened to everything else in the world around us. Maybe what we need to do once in a while is just shut off all the other voices and just listen to the Lord. Last week, I had the ability of going on my annual retreat And one thing I always love about going on retreat is that you unplug from the rest of the world. It's five days where there's no TV, no internet, not listening to the radio, not reading uh, secular novels or anything like that. Just a chance to shut out all the other voices in our lives and just listen to Jesus. And whether it's a preached retreat or a directed retreat, however it's done, our attention is turned on him. And it's largely spent in silence, but there are conversations, obviously, with the spiritual director. And sometimes even you might break out a conversation with one of the other people on retreat. But it always seems to be a spiritual discussion. And so it's time to listen to Christ and him alone. And those days of retreat can always be so enriching, so fulfilling, that I look forward to it every year. And if I come back from a retreat that I'm disappointed in, I feel like I was robbed of that opportunity to sit with Jesus and just listen to him. And I highly encourage you, if you have the time and you see a good Catholic layperson's retreat being offered, go and take the retreat. Go on it and listen. And you'll find that it is a time that really changes us when we center only on Jesus. But if we don't have the time for that, we can certainly do that in little moments all day, every day, to try to find some time to spend with the Lord where we unplug and turn off all the other voices and just listen to the Lord. It can be coming here to, uh, into church, maybe on your way back from work, and just spending 10 minutes before the Lord. The, lo- the church is open every night until 8 o'clock, so you can always come in and know you can sit here before the Lord and pray. Or little moments here and there. Maybe find a private place in your house or your property where you can go and be alone. Sometimes even driving today can offer a wonderful opportunity for that. You're stuck in traffic. Or if you have a long commute, and turn off the radio, the music, anything else, and just talk to the Lord. And you can even talk out loud. Because now, thanks to hands-free answering, you know, phones and everything like that, if somebody sees you talking out loud, they won't think you're crazy. They think you're just having a conversation with someone on the phone. So you can talk out loud to the Lord, and nobody will think you're insane. They'll just say, oh, look, they're talking to someone, and they have no idea that Jesus is the one you're talking to. But my friends, I highly and strongly encourage, take time every day just to unplug all the other voices and listen to Jesus and say, Lord, I'm so confused, perhaps, about many different things out there. What do you want to tell me? What is your truth? Let me listen to you and you alone. And especially help me, Lord, not to tune in only to my needs, not to be selfish, but to tune in to the needs of everyone else. Help me to listen to your voice, your voice calling me to give my life in service to others in every way possible. And if we can do that, then indeed we won't have to worry that those other voices out there will call us away from the Lord. But rather, we will find many voices in society that are supporting what the Lord says and helping strengthen us in that to help us realize we're not alone. But most importantly, we will know we are listening to the voice of Jesus, the voice of truth. And we will know he will never let us down. He can never be wrong. And he will lead us to the peace and the happiness that the world is looking for and failing to find any place else. And maybe we'll be a voice to them saying, if you want peace, listen to the voice of Jesus and Jesus alone. May Jesus Christ be praised now and forever.